Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Roslyn from A Little R&R &R, and I am so glad that you are here with me today. If you are a new listener, I just want to encourage you to um, stop by my blog or in the comment section of this video and let me know how you found me. I would just really love to know what brought you to my channel or to my blog or to my podcast, whichever. Um, if you are a returning listener, I am so glad that you're joining me again today. We are going to be answering a really great question and actually it's a long question that has four parts. So over the next four weeks, we are gonna be looking at the answers to this question. If you hear a little bit of pounding in the background, that would be my oldest son practicing his drums. So sorry but um, he loves his drums and it was what's gonna keep him occupied while I am uh, recording this podcast right now. So I hope it's not too disturbing to you. So here is the question. What is the best way to start studying? What to study? How to study and how to apply to our every day? Such a great question, and we will be looking at the first part of that question today. So if this is something that is, is of interest to you, if it is a question that you've been asking yourself, if you are kind of confused with about studying God's Word, then be sure to stay tuned. Okay, so once again, that question is, what is the best way to start studying, how to study, what to study, actually I just reversed those two, and how to apply it to our every day. So today we're gonna to be looking at the first part of that question, what is the best way to study God's word? So I love this question because to be really honest, I think a lot of people get really stuck here. I think that, um, you know, a lot of Christians read the Bible or they read a devotional that um, covers, you know, a verse or a couple of verses in the Bible. But sitting down to actually studying the Bible, I think that very few Christians really do that. And I think that because I see the way that the trends are going in the church, the way, the direction that a lot of um people's opinions are being directed, some of the things that they're saying, and some of that, it really leads me to believe that a lot of Christians really don't understand what God's Word actually says on these very important topics. And when we study God's Word, we gain an understanding. We aren't just reading. It's sort of like the difference between mowing your lawn and actually yanking stuff out by the roots, right? You mow the lawn, you're just getting, you know, the surface part of your lawn um, cut, but you're not actually getting down to the root of the grass, which, you know, if you have a lawn, that's not really what you want to do. But when we just read God's words, what we're doing, we're just sort of getting the surface of what God is saying, but when we study his word, that's why the Bible tells us about, talks so much about meditation, um, and knowing God's Word because you won't really know God's Word if you just read it. You have to study it. You have to meditate on it. And by doing this, we start diving into the deeper meaning of what God is saying in His Word. For an example, uh, Jesus said, be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. We read that and with our understanding of the meaning of the word perfect, we take it to mean we have to live perfect lives. And we know that's impossible because, you know, as much as we try hard to be as good as we possibly can, we will never be perfect. We'll always mess up somewhere. Somewhere along the line, our track record is going to get messed up and we're going to discover we are not perfect. And really, honestly, the quest for perfection, perfection is a horrible, horrible slave master. I know because I am a recovering perfectionist. I know just how difficult it is to try to live up to that standard because God never intended for us to live up to that standard. As a matter of fact, the word perfect in that verse does not mean a perfect record. It actually, when you look at the Greek meaning of the word that it, we translated as perfect, the Greek meaning actually means complete. 
that's totally different than from what we understand the word perfect to mean today, isn't it? But it means being made perfected. And so the perfection isn't on our end. We are who we are. We are flawed human beings. And as much as we are in a quest to live righteous and holy lives, and that should be our quest. That's what we should be trying for. God knows that we will never live up to that. That's why he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to cover over those flawed areas in our life so that we are being made perfect. The being made perfect part isn't us, it's Jesus Christ. But we would only know that if we study God's word. If we're just reading his word, we will be frustrated by our attempts to be perfect. But by studying his word, we realize perfect doesn't mean a perfect record. Perfect means that by God's grace, we are made perfect in Jesus Christ. That's what studying the word does. But First of all, we have to believe that God can speak to us. And that really is the first way that we start studying the Bible is understanding that I don't need the voice of a bunch of different people in my head telling me what to believe about the Bible, that the Holy Spirit can speak to me. Now, you will see later on in this podcast, I'm going to say, listen, you know, read trusted commentaries or listen to trusted commentators, but that isn't the first thing that we do. Okay, that is one of the last things that we do. We want to take what we feel the Holy Spirit has spoken to us and we want to confirm it uh, through people who are trusted scholars of God's word that we know are going to bring us the truth of God's word who have maybe studied God's word longer than we have to confirm that to make sure that things are lining up with what God is really saying. But the first step really is trusting that the Holy Spirit can speak to us. So we need to then start the Bible study, right? And so we want to start small. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, you might want to start a word study. So you get on to, um, you know, Blue Letter Bible that has a Strong's Concordance in there. It has a word search. Or, you know, I think most probably online um, Bibles have a word search. And so you plug in a word. Maybe you're wanting to study the word worship. Or you're wanting to study the word love. Or you want to study the word joy. Um, and you find all of the verses in the Bible with that word in it, and you begin to do a word search through the Bible. And so you just write down all of the verses in the Bible or print them out and begin just studying those verses, you know, uh, studying that, that word verse by verse. And taking notes. What did this verse say to me about that word? Um, so you can do a word study. You can do a character study. Um, Studying the life of Esther, the life of Ruth, the life of Mary, the life of David, the life of Peter, the life of Joshua. Um, you know, just these heroes of the faith in the Bible doing a character study on who they are. You might want to do a book study, a study through the book of Ephesians, a study through the book of John, a study through the book of Revelation, which would be a huge challenge. But you know what? The book of Revelation opens up with a special blessing for those that study that book. We need to study the book of Revelation, confusing as it may seem, um, doing a book study. And so choose the type of study you want to do, but start small. So make your expectations um, small in bite-sized portions. You might want to start doing your Bible study just on Saturdays because we all know that Monday through Friday we have kids that are in school, we work, we have lots of responsibilities, but Saturdays tend to be more of a relaxed day. So maybe Saturday mornings and maybe Sunday afternoons in between services or in place of your evening service. If your church does not do an evening service, you could do Sunday afternoon or evening. And Choose times of the day when you know you're going to have a, a little bit more time than what you normally would because a Bible study is going to take you longer than just reading. So what are some tools for studying the Bible? Well, I mentioned Blue Letter Bible. That is my personal favorite because Blue Letter Bible has so many tools on there to use. So it has the Strong's Concordance, which lists every Greek and Hebrew meaning of every word in the Bible. 
And so you can look up the verse and then you can look up the Hebrew or Greek meaning of that word. They also have a lot of commentaries by trusted Bible commentators who have um, who have had a great track record in their own personal lives, attested to their own personal integrity. And um, they have shown that the commentary that they give is very biblical and um, is rooted in truth. And so um, I will actually list in the comments below some of those commentators that I regularly turn to and listen to for deeper research. So you might want to, so you want to do that. Um, another tool is getting a study Bible. I personally love the uh, Spirit Filled Life study Bible. Um, the contributors, there are many, many contributors to the study Bible, many of whom I personally have um, confidence in. And um, in this study Bible, there are lots and lots of notes, and so you have like these sections, word, word wealth section, um, kingdom dynamic section. So there are little, you know, sections throughout these chapters that sort of give you deeper meaning. Um, then you have at the end of every chapter a truth and action section. Also, before each book of the Bible, you get a description of that book of the Bible, and so it gives you the history behind it, who the author was. Um, what the overall application of that book is and all of that in wealth of information and then we also have these ample here you go you can see some of my notes and all my colors and things you also have ample footnotes and I really love to read the footnotes in this Bible um, because it helps to really give um, a lot more clarity to what I am reading and so get yourself a good study Bible read those footnotes, study the uh, the introduction to the book because it will help you to give more clarity. You know, one of the things that I have found by reading the introductions to the books of the Bible is I've been able to sort of help to to see where different parts of the biblical of biblical history happen in conjunction with other books. For example, a lot of what happened in 2 Kings, you will find those same events repeated in the prophets. Toward, like towards the ends of 2 Kings, when you're talking about King Hezekiah, the prophet during that day was the prophet Isaiah. And so when you're reading about the prophet Isaiah, when you're reading the book of Isaiah, you can actually go back into 2 Kings and find where those events occur occurred in um in Second Kings, and so um, the the introductions to the books actually help to put things into chronological order for you, and also into just world history, so you can see what was, other things were happening during that time in world history. And so it's th those are very valuable. Another tool is your cross-reference. So uh, for those of you, if you're new to reading the Bible, you have this center section in, the, in your Bible. I mean, some Bibles have them, some Bibles don't. I would personally get a Bible with that. And what it is, it's a cross-reference. So then you can go, and it gives you actually other references in the Bible that either um, are saying something similar or the same as that verse, um, or events that were happening uh, simultaneously during that time. It's it's a cross-reference tool. So then you can actually look at those verses and go, oh, this author that is saying this, this other author said something similar. Or when this author said this, this other thing was happening. The Psalms are a really great example of that. David, who's writing these Psalms, in the book of Psalms, when events were happening in the book of 2 Samuel or 1 Samuel, depending on before he was king or while he was king. And so then you can actually then discover, oh, when he was writing this psalm and he was crying out to God for help and for mercy and for him to avenge him to his enemies, this is what was happening. The enemies, the, the, these were his enemies and they were attacking him, you know, at this part of history. And so using your cross references is such a wonderful tool to discovering what was actually happening in a broader perspective in the Bible or other, um, verses that um, have to do with that same topic. So that's also a great tool for if you're doing a word study or a character study. Your uh, cross -re references are a rich tool in studying the Bible. And so we start off small. 
um, and we discover what kind of study that we want to do, whether we want to do a word study, a book study, a character study, what kind of study do you want to do? Um, so, and start off small, don't bite off more than you can chew. If you are saying, I'm going to take one whole hour a day just to study the Bible, that might not be practical for you. So don't um, place an expectation on yourself that you're, that's too big for you to fulfill. Um, have good tools, use great tools, and some of those tools I'll leave in the description below. Um, but then the third thing is, is go to tr trusted commentaries. And so I, I briefly touched on this um, earlier on in the podcast, but um, don't start off that way. Don't get yourself super dependent upon having the voice of fallen man in your ear telling you what the Bible is saying. Learn to rely on the Holy Spirit. Learn to listen to His voice. Learn to recognize His voice. Learn to how to read the Bible and, and hear the Holy Spirit telling you what the Bible is saying because that is going to be invaluable to you. Because as you're reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you directly to your situation to your circumstance through his word. And a third party who doesn't even know who you are can't do that. Now they can give you insight that may apply to your circumstance, but God wants to speak to you and he wants to speak to your personal circumstance. He wants to speak to you directly. And so learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit first and then turn to trusted commentators who will confirm for you what the, what the what you believe the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. And that is not that we distrust what we feel the Holy Spirit is saying. We don't want to distrust that. Now, it may happen that you, you're reading the Bible and you got something out of it and you go to a trusted commentator and they actually uh, refute that. That's okay. That does not mean that you need to give up on the whole thing altogether. That just means you need to grow in your understanding of what the Holy Spirit is saying. It's sort of like, you know, what my kids believed that I said to them when they were two and what they believe that I am saying to them now that they are 9 and 11 are two different things because their understanding of language of the word two was extremely limited and so I would say words, and they would actually repeat those words back to me, but not accurately. And they may even take the meaning and not understand it exactly what it is. It's like my son the other day was having an, a conversation with his imaginary friend, Dario, and he said, that's an abomination. I highly doubt that my nine-year-old son, who understands the meaning of the word abomination, he's heard that said before, he's heard it said lots of times probably, but he does not know the meaning of the word abomination. And that is much how we understand the voice of the Holy Spirit, as we are learning to listen to his voice and we're learning to understand what he is saying. There are some times that we may understand wrongly, and that doesn't mean that we need to give up on studying the Bible. As a matter of fact, what it really means is the opposite of that. It means we need to dig in deeper. We need to say, okay, Holy Spirit, I didn't understand you. I thought I understood you through my you know, understanding I'm a fallen man and so it is distorted, but I want to hear you clearly. So help me clear out the distortions in my understanding and in my mind so that I can understand, I can hear you more clearly and understand you better. And so, and he will do that for you. But it is very good, especially starting out, that we take what we have heard and understood from God's word and then confirm it through um, our pastors, our elders, other trusted commentators. And like I said, in the description below, there are a list of commentators that I personally listen to and I have turned to for a long time, who I believe are time tested, as Hebrews says, that their, that their lives have been tested, their faith has been tested, and they, and they are um, people whom I, I trust. And so um, do that. There are audio commentaries that you can listen to, video commentaries that you can watch, also written commentaries that you can read, so really in every type of format. Many of these commentators also have books that, that you can read by them, and so you can read their commentaries in um, a physical book form. Form, um, and listen, watch, read, take notes. 
So take notes as you are examining their commentary on what it is that you are studying. Take notes, and as you take those notes, um, that will just help to get that deeper in your heart and in your spirit. I want to encourage you today to begin making Bible study a regular part of your quiet time. And like I said, it may not happen Monday through Friday. That's probably for most people not um, very practical, but take maybe a sat your Saturday, a couple hours on Saturday and sit and study the Bible or an hour on Saturday and an hour on Sunday and sit and study the Bible Get deeper into God's Word because it really is the difference between getting a surface understanding of the Bible and then getting a deeper understanding of the Bible, getting down to the root of what God is saying. But always remember this, that God's Word is living. It is so deep, you will never plumb the depths of it. And no matter how many times you study the Bible, no matter how many times you study familiar passages like Psalm 23 or 1 Corinthians 13 or John 3:16. No matter how many times you study those, you will always find something new, something rich, a new treasure that was not there before when you read it before because God's word is living. It is living. It is so deep. We will never plumb the depths of it. And so as you begin to digging deep into God's Word, and as you begin studying it, you will find those hidden treasures for yourself. It is worth the time invested. It is worth the effort. It is worth every sacrifice that you make because in God's Word are so many amazing gems and treasures that will add to your treasures in heaven. And that's where our heart needs to be. So if this podcast has been an encouragement to you, and I know this one is longer than what they normally are, but I feel like this is such an important subject that I wanted to be sure to just really go all in with it. But if it has been an encouragement to you, if it has been a blessing to you, please take a moment and leave me a comment. You can leave me a comment on my blog. You can email me um, or you can leave a comment on the video and let me know um, how this podcast was an encouragement to you or how it helped you. Be sure to share it with a friend as well. Follow me on my podcast channels if you are watching this on the video format. You'll find me on Rumble and on BitChute, so be sure to follow me there, rumble the video, like the video, and I will see you right back here next week.